Hi, welcome to Explore Gwinnett's Top 10. Every month we share with you some of the best places, events, and things to do in Gwinnett, Georgia's largest, most diverse county. Get to feel the small town heart that has a big city soul with host Victoria and Rico. Hi, this is Explore Gwinnett's Top 10 list. We're back here with my co-host, Victoria Hawkins. And today's Top 10 is family educational outings. I have a young kid under 15, two grown kids, but I would have loved to have known some of these things when they were younger. So let's start off with number one. I've been there to take my kid to GEHC. Tell yes, us about that. GEHC. That's short for Gwinnett Environmental and Heritage Center. Mm -hmm. And it is exactly as the name says. It's basically um, a nature center, a museum of kind of all things that are indigenous to Gwinnett. It talks a little bit about the history and the beginnings of Gwinnett. Mm -hmm. It's also um, Gwinnett's first LEED certified building. Yes. So when you pull up to the building, the roof is all green. It looks like it's covered mm -hmm. in grass and mm -hmm. like all kinds of stuff that comes from the trees. Right. But it's actually a part of um, their structure for their building and their LEED certification. Isn't that amazing? It's, it's really, really cool. And when you go inside, you can learn all about their building and how they reclaim water and all those kinds of things. Um, it's a really, really cool place for kids. They do tons of summer camps, nature walks, 5Ks, all kinds of different things that your family would love to do. And the museum is a bit interactive also, I think. It is. They do all sorts of things in there. It is. And they have some permanent exhibits as well as some revolving exhibits. All right, cool. So it's constantly changing. So you can come back and see something wholly new. Absolutely. Excellent. Number two on the list is Rancho Allegra. Yes. So that's located over in Decula. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of on the outskirts, which you would expect of a farm. Right. Um, Alegre is actually a Spanish word for happiness. Uh -huh. So Pilar, she's actually the owner of the farm. Um, she's awesome. She teaches several workshops throughout the year. Workshops on everything from soap making and making bath products and all natural body products. Mm -hmm. um, also canning and preserving, preserving. and, you know, um, vegetable gardens and all kinds of things. Yeah. Um, anything you would want to learn in that realm, Rancho Alegre is the place to go. Excellent. They also do some um, family farm adventure days where they have like pony rides and picnics and all kinds of stuff like that. So it's a lot of fun for the little ones and even older kids would really enjoy the workshops that they offer. Cool. I like the, the preserve part of it. It reminds me of my uh, my mother-in-law that she would can all sorts of yes. yeah, neat stuff. You'd have it the rest of the year. Uh, Treetop Quest, number three. Yes, so Treetop Quest is located in Buford. Uh -huh. It's actually on the same campus as GEHC that we talked about just a few moments okay. ago. Okay. Um, so it's actually, picture an obstacle course up in the trees. Uh -huh. So there's zip lining, there's all kinds of different things to do. Um, and, and they say it's for ages 3 to 93. So if you have a three-year-old, right. they have a smaller version that they okay. can do. Okay. But then it's also for adults because a lot of people think, okay, well, that's something for kids. But it's something for adults, too. Trust me, I've only been able to get to the bottom level really? for adults. <laughs> I haven't gone above that. But they have four or five levels for adults, and it goes up higher each time. Um, so it's really exciting, a lot of fun, um, definitely something that your kids will be begging you to go back to again and again. Uh, I'm sure they would be. Yes. <laughs> that is cool. Uh, hopefully no one has vertigo. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, Hudgens Art Center. Yes, Hudgens Art Center is located in Duluth. Okay. So it is Gwinnett's premier art gallery and museum and learning center. So they offer a ton of art classes, everything from um, sculpture to watercolors, acrylic painting, all sorts of things. Um, also, they even offer classes in Korean and classes in English. Really? Yes, so they're trying to address all the markets here in Gwinnett. So that's really exciting and that's awesome. That is awesome. It is. And Language the best thing good. about it, free admission. Really? Yes, totally free admission. Um, they I can do. Go wrong with that. Exactly, exactly. What's not to love? So they um, do um, revolving exhibits throughout the year. Right. So you can definitely go on their website and see what their newest, latest, greatest exhibit is. But they change it regularly throughout the year. They have a great gift shop there as well. Um, they also list all their classes, summer camps, things like that. So it makes a great family day. Wow, lots of things to do there. Number five, halfway through the list, is the Veterans Museum. I didn't know we had one, really. Yes, we do. We have a Veterans Museum that is dedicated to Gwinnett veterans. So it's located inside the historic courthouse on the square in Lawrenceville. And when you go there, it's 
so interesting to see two or three packed rooms full of old uniforms, patches, replicas of different um, aircraft and things like that. Mm -hmm. And it's all from people who are local, who have donated these items because they want other people to enjoy it. Wow. Um, there's old army yearbooks and different things like that that you can kind of look through and just kind of absorb the history of um, you know, these Guanetians that have served in the military. Right. Um, so it's really, really cool, and it's always great to talk to the veterans who volunteer at the museum. Mm -hmm. um, they love to share stories and talk with people who go. Um, we always, at Explore Gwinnett, bring people to that museum, okay. um, you know, journalists and things like that, right. and there's always, like I said, really interesting people there to talk to. I'm sure there's lots of great stories to Absolutely. tell. Absolutely. Unbelievable. Buford Community Center and Museum. Yes, so people might be really familiar with the Buford Community Center. They put on um, a lot of outdoor concerts and movies and they host different plays and things like that. And that's all fabulous, they do a great job at that. But a lot of people don't realize that there's also a Buford History Museum located in the same building. The museum is open 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Thursday through Saturday mm -hmm. and um, Buford has a really, really rich history um, in leather making. Um, the Bona Allen family, which yeah. when you ride down Main Street in Buford, there's all those big, beautiful homes down at the end of the street, yeah. okay. and those all belong to the Bona Allen family, who owned all the leather um, tanneries right there in downtown Buford. Wow. Never knew that. Yeah, so you'll learn all that if you go to the museum. <laughs> so there's um, a lot of different artifacts, like uh -huh. old saddles and old leather making equipment and all kinds of stuff. Wow. And it's not just um, about the tannery. There's also um, history on folk art. Mm -hmm. There's a place in downtown Beaufort called Slotten Folk Arts. Uh -huh. And people who are into that style of art are pretty familiar with that. They do auctions throughout the year and shows throughout the year for folk artists. Uh -huh. So there's a lot of history on that, on Tannery Row Artist Colony, history about that and uh -huh. different artists and things. So it's just a really cool place to go to yeah. kind of learn more about Gwinnett. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, this list is probably, you know, out of this list. I mean, some of these things have never, and I've been here since 95. Right. It's amazing how many people Venetians don't even know what's in the county. Exactly. This is That's what we're here for. Is, yes. This is perfect. <laughs> it's Gwinnett County Public Library has, and I know there's one there, most everyone, lots of things to offer too, right? Yes. If you don't know, now you know. We have a great library mm -hmm. system here in Gwinnett. So um, a lot of people, when they think of libraries, they think it's so antiquated, old, like they don't really have a need for the library anymore. Mm -hmm. But our library system has really, really evolved. Mm -hmm. So in addition to offering, of course, books that you can borrow and bring back, they also have a lot of other um, workshops and classes. Mm -hmm. um, Rico and I were just talking before we started. They have a podcast studio. If you're interested in getting into yes. that, learning about it. Um, they have workshops that teach you how to do podcasts, how to make videos, and then they have the studios where you can actually go in and do it. Um, another thing that Explore Gwinnett loves is they also have genealogy experts. So everybody's into like Ancestry.com and 23andMe and all those things now. If you want to kind of get into the nitty gritty of researching your family history, they have staff who are genealogists and experts in different fields, like whether it be um, Hispanic heritage or African American heritage, and um, they will help you in actually tracing your family's history using all the resources at the library. I never knew that. A that's lot of people don't realize that. That makes that. a lot of sense, actually. And do you know that you can also borrow books, not just the real books, which I love to read, and even my kids, believe it or not, even my 14-year-old would prefer reading a real book rather than wow. a digital book. But you can get a digital, you can borrow a digital book online. It's really easy. Okay, too. I didn't realize yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, I've done that before, too. My kids have done that. And I don't, you know, and they restrict it because... You buy a certain amount of digital books, you can only lend a certain amount. Right. <laughs> but uh, but you still could do it that way. So they they are out there doing that. Another kind of really good resource they have is um, a lot of people don't know they have free passes for a couple different large attractions around not just Gwinnett but the Atlanta area. Everybody mm. loves the zoo. Yeah. You can actually rent an admission pass to the zoo. Really? And I think they have four at each library. So your fa if you have a family of four, right. you can go to the library and check out the Zoo Atlanta Pass and then go to the zoo. There are a couple of restrictions. You can't go on the weekend. 
Okay. So you have to pick a weekday to go. Right. And you can imagine it's a hot commodity. Yeah. So you can definitely go online beforehand and see which library has their zoo pass available and then go to that particular is library it just and check a zoo it out. Or is it they a have a couple other attractions um, and they list them all online. It's I just amazing. don't know. I, just never, I never knew that too. That would make sense. Anything you can borrow. Exactly. And the zoo's not cheap, so no, it's, it's not. a great savings. Yeah. Love that. Now this next one, number eight, love this place, been there several times. Southeastern Railway Museum. Yes. The so. Southeastern Railway Museum is actually the state's official transportation museum. And it's located okay. right here in Duluth. Mm -hmm. So when you pull up there, it just kind of looks like an old train yard and you don't really know what to expect and what's going to be inside. Right. But when you go inside, it is so cool. Yes. If you like antique stuff or vintage things or just old things or just history, mm -hmm. It is an awesome place to go. They have um, events throughout the year, several different train cars. They have train cars that carry presidents. Mm -hmm. They have um, old dining cars. They have old Amtrak trains. They even have MARTA buses from the 1960s. <laughs> Just all kinds of crazy stuff. They have old school taxi cabs, um, sure. just kind of anything transportation related. Mm -hmm. So, you know, kids love that kind of stuff. Um, they also have several old uniforms from, you know, train conductors and right. things like that, all kinds of table train sets. It's just a really cool place to go. Their events are great. They do, um, like touch a truck events, things mm -hmm. like that. Sure. Um, but then probably their most popular event is every Christmas they do a Polar Express screening. So basically oh, wow. kids come in their pajamas uh -huh. and all that stuff and they get on a train car and they watch the Polar Express movie. <laughs> and while the movie is playing out, whatever's yeah. happening in the movie actually happens. So if Santa jumps onto the train in the movie, yeah. then that really happens. Like a Santa jumps onto the train <laughs> there. So that's probably one of their events that, oh, that sells out cool. every single yeah, year. Yeah, that is really cool. Yeah. I know we were there once. I took one of my kids there. And I felt like we were on the Orient Express almost walking <laughs> through the dining car. I was like, man, this is cool. I'd love to do that in real life. That's, that is a great, it's a great place. Number nine, winding down, we're going to the Norcross Museum and Firehouse. Now, I've been, I've seen the outside. I haven't been inside yet. I'd love to okay, you should definitely check yeah. it out. Um, so this museum is located right next to the Norcross Welcome Center. So it's a separate building, and if you ever want to go, all you have to do is just call the Welcome Center, and they come and unlock it for you. So it's not just like really? open. Yeah. Huh. So it's like VIP, you know? Oh, cool. So you call, and they come right. and open it for you. <laughs> um, so it talks um, inside the museum. It's actually an old firehouse. Mm -hmm. There's a huge fire truck in there, so that makes great pictures for Instagram, sure. of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it tells a lot about um, the history of Norcross's fire station and things like that. Um, also, it tells um, just kind of general information about Norcross history, mm -hmm. about some of the families that have lived there. Um, there's also a baseball museum because it's kind of weird, but Norcross baseball. has produced a lot yes. of... Yes, Norcross baseball stars. Yes, sure. exactly. Yeah. Yes. So they've produced a lot of um, professional baseball players uh -huh. and even minor league players. And um, you can go there and read um, articles about those different players and see uniforms and even kind of learn the history of some of the street names. Some of the streets are actually named after baseball players. I, who would have thought? I know. <laughs> who, but, who I, but I know the city of Norcross had a lot of great players that came out of the city. Yes, absolutely. Last on the list is Swanee Sculpt Tour. Yes, Swanee Sculpt Tour. Um, Swanee Sculpt Tour is actually um, mainly based um, in the Swanee Town Center area. So they probably have 20 sculptures and they rotate those every other year. And so basically, they put out an RFP to artists all over the country, mm -hmm. and um, artists submit um, renderings and things like that of what they would like to make, and then they choose about 20 artists. So those artists bring in these huge outdoor sculptures. And there's some really fun and whimsical ones. Mm -hmm. There's some that actually have movement. There's one called Swinging 2 that's right in front of City Hall that actually when the wind blows, it sways back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, there's one that I love. It's called You'll Shoot Your Eye Out. And it's actually from the, the old movie, um, The Christmas Story. And you know the leg lamp? Yes. So it's a lamp. huge oversized sculpture <laughs> of that, really? you know? So there's some really fun ones. There's Humpty Dumpty, all kinds of stuff. Oh, wow. So it's just a lot of fun. And a lot of times it's just surprising to people. They don't expect that when they're going to a city hall and then there's like all these outdoor sculptures. Now there's a fun part to this too, I think, right? Because you can vote on your favorite sculpture and then at the end of it, 
what? The city might buy it. So that is a really cool thing. Um, um, they have an app that um, when you go there, you can listen to the app and learn all about the process of how the artist created that particular piece. Okay. Then you go online and you vote for your favorite, uh -huh. and hopefully um, the city will buy that piece at the end of the two years. So they have a couple pieces that they have on permanent display, but right. most of them change out regularly. Wow. Then, you know, this, is a, this was a great list, actually. I love this last part also. Um, we do this every month, a top ten list with Explore Gwinnett's Victoria Hawkins. Um, this is a great way to find out what's going on, and every list has a different thing. Check out the date nights list uh, that was done a month ago, and uh, you'll find some great places to take your, your better half or your friends to as a group date. Uh, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next month. Join us every month for Explore Gwinnett's Top 10 List on the Peachtree Corners Life podcast and website. See you next time.